Welcome back to Out of Office. Today, I would like to introduce you to probably the most world-renowned data scientist in the field of remote and hybrid work in the world. Uh, please welcome from the Stanford <laughs> School of Economics, Professor Nick Bloom. Nick, I'm so pumped you're here. It's great to have you on the show today. Thank, thank you, Nat. You're now definitely my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take that. I'm kind of curious to know, uh, of all the research that you've been associated with, what are you personally proudest of? So, uh, probably the 2010 to 12 study I did, which was a randomized control trial and working from home, because it was so unique and the results were so unexpected. So just to tell you how this came about, someone called James Liang, who is the co-founding CEO and now chairman of Trip.com, a massive massive nasdaq listed company worth i don't know tens of billions of dollars and he's the single largest shareholder james explained they uh in the headquarters in shanghai had a problem which was they were growing really fast trips doing really well winning business but it was very expensive to expand the footprint in shanghai it's an incredibly expensive city and so james was like well how are we going to keep growing without killing ourselves in office space We've been thinking about doing working from home. So with James and the CEO, Jane Sun, we concocted this plan to do a randomized control trial. And our view was in advance, well, look, what would happen is people are going to goof off, but are they going to goof off and, you know, laser around so much that it's going to make it not a good idea for the firm in terms of saving office space? Or may they say goof off a little bit, but they'll save so much office space, it's worth it. So we run this randomized control trial. So basically people with even birthdays get to work in the office every day. And people with odd birthdays get to work from home four days a week and only come in once. And this is like a big science experiment. And we find that amazingly work from home employees are 13% more productive. So all our views on like how much they're going to goof off were totally wrong. They weren't goofing off whatsoever. They were massively more productive. There was almost an extra day a week. I mean, that's huge. And in some senses, that was an experiment. I was expecting something and something that came out as the complete reverse with the sign change. It's crazy to think so many companies are still repeating the same uh, mistakes or assumptions that uh, were behind your surprise discovery 10 years earlier when you were working with Trip.com and you baked in this assumption of a decline in productivity and then realized actually the opposite was true. So I'm, I'm really interested to, to dig into that with you today. So our, our topic is why hybrid companies are, are missing the point. Now, I thought I'd start by asking, uh, in your work, you must have been exposed to some really juicy stories of companies missing the point <laughs> when it comes to these setups. Uh, care to share any? One of the most entertaining stories is actually Marissa Mayer. Back in 2013, she banned work from home at Yahoo. That, that was at least the public uh, story of it. I actually interviewed her and said, what happened? And she said, oh my God, it was really, you know, it was painful. They basically had this moderation of work from home policy. And she said, as we were putting stuff in place, I discovered this group of fully remote folks. And so I said, well, you know, what are, how, how are we evaluating them? And apparently there was silence in the room. And someone eventually said, well, we do have their logins for the laptops. And she said, okay, but let's have a look at that data. So they pulled the data. And she said, it turns out that some folks uh, had not logged in for like two or three. And I thought she was about to say hours. Uh, and she said, two or three weeks. It's like two or three weeks. You know, you could have another job. And so I think the moral of the story is across the two studies, work from home works really well, but you do have to evaluate and have performance reviews, you know, incentives, et cetera, for output. The one problem I think it comes up is where people have terrible management practices, then it kind of free floats. And in some sense, that can give the whole thing a bad name. And that's what a bunch of these CEOs beating up on it are kind of picking on the very worst example, which doesn't really represent, you know, the typical situation. So Nick, one of the things that I really appreciate about the way that you approach the world is that as a data scientist, you're always looking at the facts and the logic that underpin something. So clearly a lot of companies have entered into hybrid working arrangements because they believe that it's the best model. Well, what is the data around a hybrid working model? Do the facts support it? Yeah, in short, yes. So in short, hybrid and remote can definitely increase company profits. The flex index shows that 90% of S&P 500 companies have employees on hybrid. So why does it make money? Let's just go through it very carefully. 
So first thing, hybrid versus five days in the office. Why might that be profitable to be hybrid? Turns out, if you look in the data, if you let employees work from home on say Monday, Friday, productivity is about flat. So it's not better, it's not worse. So how come it's profitable? Well, the other big benefit, well, the big benefit of hybrid is employees love it. They value it about as much as an 8% pay increase. So for companies, it dramatically reduces recruitment and retention costs. The numbers you normally hear is for a skilled employee, every one time you lose them, it's roughly cost of replacement recruitment is about half their salary. So if you have someone in New York say, and they're paying them $150,000 a year, they quit, that's a $75,000 loss. It's expensive to get a new person in. So a hybrid is profitable because you're basically flat on performance and you dramatically reduce your recruitment retention costs. So that's why hybrids worked out. Fully remote, it's kind of a different, different beast. Uh, so fully remote, there's a lot of studies on the impact on productivity. They're all over the place, to be honest. They depend on if it's really well managed, it can be positive. But the typical company, they're not so well managed, not so used to it. You may think, like, why would any firm do it? The reason is, again, it's hugely profitable. How can that be? Well, I say, look, 10% less productivity, maybe for my workers, but I don't have to pay for office space anymore. And that's saving about 10% of their costs. And then on top of that, I can now hire best in class wherever I want around the country or globally. Typically, companies say that can reduce their wage bill from anything from another, you know, five to 50%. So suddenly it's beginning to look like a fantastic deal. And so that is why fully remote and hybrid are, are starting to hit today. They make companies, I mean, globally, tens, hundreds of billions of dollars. The reason this thing has stuck from 2020 is it's profitable for companies. And it, it is very much here to, say, to stay. There are some outliers at this point they really are outliers kind of you know renegade ceos like elon musk of this world are against it well, elon's a really interesting example because of course he he famously flip-flopped i mean first he canceled remote work and made comments to the effect of you know they're not really working they're not getting anything done uh but then within a couple of weeks he'd gone in the other direction and announced that five of his global offices were shutting down and those employees would now be working permanently remotely uh, and reinstated a hybrid model for pretty much the rest of his workforce. And I've often wondered, what was it that he read or saw that convinced him to change his mind on that? I mean, clearly he was exposed to some facts and figures. He's a smart guy, right? So he saw the logic and realized that he was on the wrong side. Um, perhaps that came from your research. I think what changed his mind, at least from what I've heard from the grapevine, I have one friend that's working, it was at Twitter, I don't know if he still is now, I hadn't spoken to him for a few months, but said there was just such a high rate of quits that so if you're tweeting your mask and you, you say look i want to reduce headcount by 50 percent you actually want to choose which 50 percent leave you don't want the best talent leaving so the problem is if you're really mean to employees guess who tends to jump ship first the people with the best outside options the 50 percent that tend to quit and leave are probably the best 50 percent in most industries you kind of get a sense of who's high performing they can get other jobs so I think Musk realized what was going to happen with everyone leaving and also figured out you can save a lot of money by closing offices. He discovered that working from home fully remote is actually quite profitable, or at least, you know, reduces costs. And so he went with where the data goes. But I don't think he read my research. Much as I'd love to claim it, I think he just figured it out from first principles. I mean, he definitely acknowledged the factors that you mentioned, right? I want to talk about something that you said earlier. Uh, you were talking about management practices and basically how they make the difference between the success or the failure of a 100% remote model. And I feel like I could almost abbreviate what you're saying down to the principle that bad managers are going to get better results when they have that face-to-face -face relationship, but great managers will actually get better results when they are location agnostic. Is that fair? Yeah, you know, it's a very good way of thinking about it. I actually have some research projects where we look at quality of management practices. We've done this in tens of thousands of companies. And one of the things you see is exactly that. So well-managed companies are much better uh, dealing with work from home. So, uh, you know, well-managed companies do better, but they did a lot, lot better in 2020 because everyone went home. A very successful, fully remote team. A, you're probably hiring people that are already reasonably experienced. So you're not hiring fresh rookies out of college. They maybe have, you know, five plus years worth of experience. B, they're still meeting probably once a month, once every other month in person they're having like retreats for a day or so see there's a big uh focus on performance review and evaluation so if you're managing me you are regularly checking on how i'm doing looking at what i'm achieving you're not letting me free flow it means i feel like you know i have to deliver 
And finally, there is active feedback. Uh, a lot of focus, including you know, in training on uh, asynchronous stuff. But you have a model that's aimed at being, kind of being aware that we're working remotely, and you're going to have to set aside, I don't know, time on Zoom, for example, to go through each week, and we're going to have to have you know, 30 minutes. If I think back to those early days of the pandemic, I, mean, I remember hearing a lot of resistance to the early research that was coming out. You know, the research said productivity's gone up, and everyone responds, "Well, it's a crisis. It's different." Uh, there's no studies on the long-term effects of remote work on productivity. But, I mean, it's four years on now. Uh, that's no longer true. There are long-term studies, and you're the man behind many of them. So I'm curious to know how your view has evolved on uh, the effectiveness of a fully remote model in the long term. What, what is the data that supports your hypothesis there? some ways, the best data on productivity is the U.S. macro economy. The U.S. has great data. Uh, you know, there are other countries, but the American data is very good on productivity. It's kind of the one folks focus on. Its performance has been pretty amazing. So productivity growth from 2020 onwards has been about 1.6%. And it was about 1.2% before. So it's accelerated. And it's like accelerated while we've had a global pandemic go through it. So like if, if you were landed from, you know, the planet Zorg and said, what's gone on? And I said, the productivity growth has gone up uh, from one, you know, it's gone up by a third. Uh, at the same time that we've had a global pandemic, you think something amazing must have happened to offset that. What is this you know, miracle thing? And my guess is a chunk of it is honestly working from home. We save a lot of real estate. We save a lot of commuting time, a lot of resources. There's more people working actually because it's more appealing to work. There's multiple margins. We add them all up. It's actually been a big driver of the economy. Yeah, it is a seismic shift. Uh, Nick, we've covered an awful lot of ground today. This has been such an intriguing conversation. So I wanted to ask you, what is your number one takeaway for our viewers today? If they remember one thing that you said, what should it be? Work from home is hugely profitable for firms and it's here to stay. You know, don't believe anyone that claims uh, it's over. In fact, the return to office is the thing that's over. That's what's died. Um, I mean, the most critical thing is you just have to manage it well. It is a more complicated thing to do. So for companies managing hybrid and particularly fully remote employees, there's tremendous potential, but you have to get it right. Think of a, you know, a modern computer 20 years ago. They seem scary and uh, uh, you know, frightening to most people, at least back then. I mean, I'm 50, so I've seen these things come into the, to the uh, workplace, but clearly they're of the future and the work from home is very much the same. And if someone watching this is interested in following you and hearing more of what you've got to say, where can they find you? LinkedIn. So LinkedIn would be great. I'm a big fan of uh, LinkedIn. I post pretty regularly there, maybe every other day. Very much engaging conversation. So yeah, please follow me on LinkedIn. Well, thank you so much, Professor Nick Bloom of the Stanford School of Economics. It has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us and take care. Okay, hey, thanks very much, Andrew.